Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we have a an update about our uh, DPV training. We uh, we get tons and tons of questions about this because eight months ago we released a video and a podcast about the DPV training we had with Marissa Eckerd and talking about how, how much of an epic failure that was from our part. Uh, because we showed up with a DPV and zero experience and pretended to be experts and passed within two days. And uh, we didn't pretend to be experts. I don't were. remember well, we, pretending we that. We, we just, hoped. We went in and we... <laughs> um, let me give us a brief evaluation. We sucked. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. we didn't know what we were doing. And Marissa was uh, very patient with us, I will say, even because we definitely messed up quite a bit. That was, you guys already know that from the original DPV yeah. video. And if you haven't seen that video or if you haven't listened to that podcast, I would advise that you go back and watch that video before you listen to this one or you watch this video. I'll link it, you know, right here on the corner uh, if you want to check that out because we're just going to, this is a continuation to that story uh, and what happened after that. So when we did that training, the suggestion was for us to just go back and just do a lot of training on our own. Practice. Uh, just practice, right? Just go back and practice and not just DPV practice because as we know, you know, that, that whole thing about like pra practice makes perfect is, is BS. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Um, so the suggestion was just go back and do a ton of cave diving. Just like get really good at cave diving because we both are fairly new at cave diving. We haven't been cave diving for decades or something. Um, and then once you get really, really good at cave diving, then do some DPV diving and then try again. And that meant proficient, beautiful, streamlined trim and buoyancy. We were not doing a good job at all with her with that. Um, and right. that included being trim and buoyant while mo multitasking, laying the primary in high flow caves. That's right. Uh, setting jump lines, putting down your cookie. So we really just needed to get ourselves proficient. Before you added a DPV on top of this whole thing, right? Yes. Um, so that's basically what we did. We went back and we started practicing. We, we followed kind of directions. And what we decided to do is, again, just before we went too far with practicing and because perfect practice makes perfect, we decided to book a whole week, like five days or whatever it was, with Ed, Ed Sorensen, right? One of the best cave divers in the world. We have featured Ed multiple times here on the show. And we said, Ed, you know, we want to come and dive with you, number one. Number two, get some pointers and training from you since we actually bought the DPVs from it, from Cave Adventures. Um, and, you know, basically let's just go diving and, you know, teach us some things. And at the end of the week, maybe uh, do a quick evaluation and tell us, you know, what else we need to do to improve. Maybe, um, maybe show us what we're doing in terms of toes and different exercises and things like that. And, um, you know, evaluate us basically. That's yes. basically it. Now, one one key thing I think that we need to clear up from the beginning is that in most of the caves, which is why we bought the DPVs for, because the caves that we dive in Florida have flow, which is a big difference with caves in a lot of other places in the world, like Mexico, for example, which is very famous for their cenotes and their, their caves, basically. They don't really have a whole lot of flow. So a lot of people get certified in Mexico and they are like, oh, you know, I got certified in Mexico. And they say, well, you just come dive in Florida and see how you deal with the, <laughs> we have with a like, river. We have like a river of flow. It's exactly. hard flow on certain caves. Yeah. I mean, JB comes to mind and oh. Mariana, right? Beyond a massive amount of flow, which is with Ed yeah. of where we're doing this practice. <laughs> right. It's a lot to deal with. Um. So... Because of that, that's what we wanted to use a DPV, a diver propulsion vehicle, is to be able to dive in caves and not swim against a river. Um, and we, you know, we basically uh, talked to Ed about going into this into this thing and and having the training basically with him and say, just you know, take us there, um, show us some things and, and whatnot. And we went and uh, we spent five days with him. They were awesome. Learn a lot. We, do, I mean, a we lot. learned a massive amount, 
and he started us not in the high flow caves. The first day or two, two I can't days, remember, I think. two days was in a cavern. Oh, uh, we went out. We went to vortex. We went to vortex. Yep. And we just practiced basic, basic stuff like go straight. Where is the DPV? Is it high? Is it low? Is it is the is the uh, jet stream of the DPV hitting you in the right place? Where are your fins? How do you turn the DPV? Are you holding your left hand in the right place? What are you doing with your right hand? Can, let me see you stop. Are you able to stop and be that neutral? Was the are you flying to the surface and <laughs> or are you hitting the bottom? Because the DPV can disguise good buoyancy and trim. In mm-hmm. other words, imagine you got this die propulsion vehicle in front of you. And if you're if you're really not buoyant, if you're if you're in fact positively buoyant you could just point the dpv down right and it's going to make you look like you're staying neutral or yeah. vice versa if you're sinking you just kind of your body would just turn it up and it's going to keep you neutral but then if you stop you can't disguise it anymore you're either going to fly to the surface or go down and that for me i'm always going to speak to about myself look that didn't come easy for me. I had to get used to it. The other thing I want to add, Gus, that I had to get used to is I was perfectly good, neutral, good trim on the Sidewinder without a DPV. But the, <laughs> but the change of depth going up and down happens 10 times faster, at right. least, on a DPV. So all of a sudden... When you go up on a DPV, you're you're not gradually going up. You're going up, 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 up. You better be able to react quickly. What do you dump first? Do you dump loop volume? Do you dump your wing? Do you dump, start dumping your dry suit first? So you're having, I just want to put it in perspective. You're having to multitask all these different things when you're using a DPV to maintain this neutral buoyancy and good trim at a much faster pace. And I had never done that before and Gus had never done that before. So it made it look like we had horrible buoyancy and trim. I don't think we had as bad of buoyancy and trim as we showed that we, as we performed when we had a DPV with us. I don't, but look, I mean, we needed that practice and this is why. I want to set the stage here for all the different complexities that are added when you bring a DPV into the picture. Yeah, I'm glad we were at Vortex because for me, I, I struggle the most with the whole hold exercises. You know, I'll be cruising, I don't know, like 10 feet from the bottom, like three meters from the bottom. And then at a random time, he would just look at you and give you the signal for hold, which is like a fist. So it'll be like hold and I would just let go of the trigger and I would just plummet to the bottom. I would just like nosedive, bang into the bottom. And everything in scuba diving is delayed when it comes to uh, buoyancy, like even adding air, like even if I would just hammer the inflate button, there was no stopping me. Uh, And what happens is because there's a delay reaction, I knew that because I was inflating, which is my my main, you know, reflect, basically, as soon as I see that I'm nose diving, I would hammer the inflate button. So it would be double bad because I would hit the bottom and then my inflation would kick in. My delay reaction of the inflation would kick in. So I would start you know just basically skyrocketing for the surface so then i'm deflating you know so it was just <laughs> we had horrible, no, we had horrible. no anticipation skills we were we were just reacting at the moment it's like stop uh oh i'm flying up or stop i'm sick it up the other thing i i do want to make sure of is that we when we went back to ed we did the training using the kiss spirit yeah not the sidewinder and Later, I did use the Sidewinder, ultimately, and I practiced with the Sidewinder. And for me, that was way easier. Yeah. Way, way easier to have good trim and buoyancy on the Sidewinder. Gus hadn't yet had enough time on the Sidewinder. There are certain requirements. You have to dive a certain number of hours on the Sidewinder in a cave before you can do DPV on the Sidewinder. The classic. And he hadn't had that yet, so I wanted to be on the same unit as him. Right. I thought in my mind, we'll do it together. We'll do it together. We'll have the same unit. And then you And I could not (laughs) feel balanced ever with those two (laughs) steel 50s and a DPV on the Spirit. Never. I would, if I wasn't moving my legs, I would just fall. Literally, like. Yeah. fall i mean it was too much 
I don't know. It just wasn't able to maintain good trim and buoyancy on the Spirit. Right. So so we did those two days with with Ed. And um, again, I, I, I felt conflicted because there were two sides of me. One side was, man, I really hope nobody was watching that. That, that looked horrible. Uh, <laughs> you know? Uh, but then the other side of me was, man, I really hope somebody was recording that because that footage is priceless. I would love to have it. Um, nobody recorded it, uh, which is a shame because that is the kind of footage that I think we're, we're famous for here in Dive Talk. We don't mind posting that stuff and reacting to it and putting it out there for people to see and learn from. Uh, I wish I had it, but we, we don't have the, the footage from that training. Um, and yeah, two but days, two days of that, we got better. Uh, obviously, we we learned how to deal with that. We weren't skyrocketing or crashing into the bottom anymore. So we moved into the caves. So now, once we felt like we were getting the handle of that, then you open the fire hydrant into your face. And now you have to do it with that. <laughs> okay. It is humbling because now you come into JB yeah, with, Jackson the, Blue. with the DPV fire hydrant of, of flow and at that time it was very high even ed even said it's pretty high right now right and we're gonna lay the primary line wall dpv do you know how hard that is <laughs> we learned ed taught us i need he more made, hands he's like look there's a way to do it he does a way where you throw it up high to your right yeah. while you're t doing your first tie off and then you're Bring the DPV down and use it to move while you're holding your reel out all at the same, all while maintaining good buoyancy and trim. And yeah. a river is blowing in your face. And then you're going to do your next tie off. Put it up high. Do your secondary tie off. Bring it back down. Scooter to the next tie off. This is hard. Now, what here's what's interesting. This is, I don't know why. We did pretty well. With laying the line in JB on the first time we tried it, I don't know why. And Ed even said, "Wow, you guys, I'm that was not that bad. was not bad. Like you did a good job, man. Like yeah. you see, and I remember he said, you see, you didn't really need to be as scared of it as you thought.' Right. And I was like, I remember feeling pretty good. Like, wow, I can't believe I'm not like completely backwards, upside down, tangled in line right now. <laughs> Dying. That's what I thought I was going to happen to us. So we did it. The one we did a pretty good job with that. One thought I saw earlier that I didn't finish that I was about to say is that the vast majority of caves in Florida, and that's when I went into Mexico and got out on a tangent, uh, they don't require you to have a certification to be on a DPD. <laughs> that's one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, one big one that we like to dive in is Jenny Springs, which does require you to have a DPV certification unless you're with a DPV instructor a cave dpv instructor then you can go with that instructor uh that's how they are able to teach classes in there and stuff um but uh the other caves that are just open public caves they don't you don't have to have a certification we wanted to have the certification even though we don't need it we wanted to have it i think it's a good example is it's a safety thing and uh on top of that we wanted to do it with really good instructors that's why we picked marisa and ed exactly and it's not just I agree with everything you just said, but I want to add one more thing. I really wanted I wanted to be able to DPV cave dive properly. Yeah. I Whatever. I have a card now. That's great. And it allows me to go into Jenny. And that is great. But I also want to know that I'm not destroying the cave. I'm not going to hurt my buddies. That I can, I can tow you out. Trust me. And you know sure. I can get you out of that cave That's safely, right. proficiently. I mean, I want to know that. I don't want to be um, cheating, if you will. Like, well, right. I don't need one, so I'm going to go in there. It's not safe. You mm -hmm. need this class to do it correctly. Yep. Yep. So um, so anyway, we went with Ed. Um, we, we, uh, we tried. We, uh, we did the, the toes and all of that inside Jackson Blue, obviously, with the, with the flow and all of that. We struggled just like we did on the first training we did with Marissa. And, you know, by the end of the week, it was like, you guys need a lot more training and practice. Well, I'm going to tell you what he said in our debriefing exactly, because I remember yeah. he played back our videos. That's right. I was on the spirit, remember? 
Um, I couldn't stop the kicking on the spirit. For me, that was one of my biggest problems. My buoyancy and trim got better, but I I was so unbalanced. I never could stop kicking. And he had some other evaluations for you. I think you were still a little low at times with your fins. I think that may have been one of the things he said to you. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. We, we needed more work. And what he said, exact words where he goes, look, guys, I think you both need one more day. This is what he said. And you're about 90% there. He used mm-hmm. the word 90. And I'd like to see you one more time. Go back and practice. And I think the next time you'll be ready to go. I went back and practiced exclusively on the Sidewinder. I never, ever have been back on the Spirit with the DPV. Because I knew I cannot get that unit balance for me. I'm, I'm pretty light. I weigh like 138. Having two steel 50s on the Spirit, I can't do it. It just doesn't work for me. Sidewinder? Right. Well, I'll... I'll, you'll you'll play some videos. I think um, it, 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 I, it really really helped. I think that by the end of that second training, though, we we both were in like different places yeah. mentally. Mm. I mm. feel like mm. um, I think that we uh, first of all, the, if we if we talk about pros and cons or or good and bad, the good news I would say is that we we were much better, much better DPV uh, divers. Yes yes yes. Um, I think that good we. Point. We both, when we left, I think we stopped for lunch or whatever, and we both were talking, and we were both like, it's amazing how much we improved, like, after this week. And yes. if we went diving outside of Jenny, like, just went on a regular cave just for practice, I feel like I trust you. Like, you can get me out of there. Like, I yes. I felt, because we did the toes. we did, And, yeah, like... Maybe my fins hit the bottom here and there or whatever. Like we, we, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't to the standards of Ed Sorensen, who's a, he has high standards as an instructor, right? The, the, like, ex- extremely high, and I'm glad. But Gus, absolutely. you just said something. We knew you will get out of the cave, and you will be all the way out of the cave. Yeah, um, I will as well. And absolutely. That part we, I think even Ed kind of said that. And we knew, okay, we can, we, we, we can, we can do this, but yeah, we're think, not beautiful. I think again, at we, that point, we were, we were in, in, uh, in different mindsets. Again, the, the, the plus was we were both much better, but we weren't up to the standards. I would say of being a certified by Ed Sorensen as a, as a DPV cave diver yet. And we probably wouldn't have been for Marissa either. She has right. very, very right high standards as well, and she, right. as she should. And I think on the way home, we both, we both decided that we were both going to get certified by Ed. We both decided that, but we both decided to do it in different ways. Yes. It right. was happening. I don't know if it was going to take me a year, 15 years, 20 years, but before I am no longer on the face of the earth, I knew in my mind, I will get this. Yeah. But for me, I said, I got to go and literally be on the sidewinder in the DPV yeah. and just practice. I got to be on it. I have to do it. I can't just you know, come back and not be like, ready in my mind so this is so this is i think one of the one of the things that are different between us that happens a lot like our our cave certification we we went different paths and we both got certified our dpv path was also different the way we decided to tackle it was different uh we arrived to different conclusions i think for some reason i don't remember why we we drove different cars for this for this trip with ed I don't remember why. Do you remember why? But we drove two different cars, which we typically drive together. I don't know why. You did we... for that trip? We... Oh, because I because I took my Sidewinder training, I feel like. Oh, right. You were already there. Yeah. So and I was already you rolled there. into the... Right. Because yes, I got yes, Sidewinder yes, yes. certified with Ed that week. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we drove separately. So obviously on the way there, I don't know if you've ever made the drive from Mariana, Florida to Atlanta, but there's uh, zero things to see. Uh, on the drive from it's like <laughs> farms. Oh my God. There's nothing. It's horrible. 
Uh, so a lot of time to think and meditate and to uh, really contemplate what you're going to do next. And on the way home, I was 100% convinced that I couldn't wait to go back and do it. Like I, I could not wait. Like I'm like, I just want to turn the car around and go back and do it. Okay. Whereas, Interesting. I, I yeah. was, okay, I'm glad I'm going home. I'm down, and I, I'm going to get my sidewinder. I want it rigged properly, and I'm going to just DPV, and I'm going to get good at this. I'm going to practice because I really wasn't sure if I would ever be able to do meet Ed's standards. Right. I'm not kidding you. I, Those Gus standards knows, are high. Yes. I highly recommend you take DPVK from Ed. He's going to make sure you are yeah. a very good DPB cave diver. And I honestly doubted myself. And frankly, I'm really glad I had Gus because I, he, he had to bolster me back up. I'm not right. going to lie, everybody. I, he was like, man, don't, don't be so doubt. You, you know, we're going to get, this. we're going to get this. It's, you know, we're going to get it. And I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to actually have a, DPV cave certification at the standards that um, Ed is 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 putting in front of us, but I'm gonna practice my butt off on the sidewinder and try to get better and go back and not even know when I go back if I'm actually gonna even test with Ed. Just yeah. go back and actually be there and DPV cave dive more. In this case, it was with Medi and and not Ed. I don't know why uh, I'm like this. I don't know why. Like, it's not something I learned. I, I was just born with it, right? There's this weird thing I have where it's like, like nothing worth having is easy. And like, the harder it is, the more I want. So like, hmm. it's like, if somebody says it's like, oh yeah, that's, it, that's impossible. Like you can't, <laughs> you know, or like this is not, and it's not like one of those things like going dry caving, like that looks miserable. It's not that it's, it's awesome. hard. It's not that it's hard and it's like, oh, it's impossible to go like that. I, I just get it. It just looks miserable. It's not a hard thing to do. It's not hard to go in a dry cave. I well, get it. The it's climbing easy. part is hard. Yeah, okay. But that's not that's just, that just looks miserable. But like getting that DPV that's certification right. from Ed meant it wasn't the card thing for me. It was getting the foundation and all the skills and making no mistakes and like having the mental strength to like build myself up to the level to demonstrate proficiency to his standards, right? Mm. So for me, it was like, there's so few people that will ever be able to do this that I cannot wait to go back and do it. It's that, the weirdest thing. That's a great description. For me, it was, I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah. I, I'm i like, man, I, I, I see, I see... I was out there and I saw other people on their DPV. I will never mention any names. They're not at Ed standards. They're DPVing around and they're not at Ed standards and they have a certification. Not by Ed. No, I don't know who it's with. I don't care. I'm just saying they're not. For sure. I know what Ed expects. I mean, I know what he expects. Right. They don't have that. Right. And I... So I was a little bit just like, man, I just, I'm never going to, I'm I'm not, I've got myself stuck because I'm not going to now like go to another instructor. I want to keep learning from Ed because it's incredible learning and I'm in the process anyway, but I don't know if I can ever get it. I don't know if I'm ever going to reach his standards. And I know in order for me to do that, I'm going to need to just practice, practice, practice. And then if I somehow can get to that level, yes, of course, what an honor to, if I could possibly get certified by Ed, then I would say, I feel like we are, we are, we are very proficient DPV cave divers. Yeah. If you get that card from Ed, that's what it's saying. And by the way, I think, I, I mean, just between us, I don't think anyone is listening to this right now. Um, I think that if we, at that point, we just gave up and went with another instructor, I think we would have gotten the card. 
We would have. We just but, wanted to evaluate. We would have, but we would have been. I, I, I. But it works like that. I'm no, not but calling other instructors out. No, but it would have been disappointing. Honestly, I get it, it would have been. It would have been a cop out in my mind for sure. Like, okay, you know, maybe I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do it again and somebody else. But that's kind of like for a sure cop out. It would have been a cop out for sure. But I'm just saying, like, it, it, there's always, and he works like that for everything. It, there's always somewhere where you're like, man, I hope I get that guy or that instructor or that teacher. Like, everywhere in life, in like everywhere, you always want to try to avoid the hard thing. No, right? I, I, but I'm in a I'm, lot of cases. I am beyond happy that it, it's with that we didn't cop out at that, that point. We we, go, that we were we going to go try this again with Ed. I, right. I would not. Right. want to do it with anybody else so so anyway so going back um i was like i can't wait to go back so obviously i'm i'm in a situation where i can't just go diving every weekend but i do reach out back to medi and medi is one of the instructors at cave adventures and i tell medi hey medi i want to go back and medi uh by the way was with us during that week that we were training with Ed. Uh, he was helping out. He was our buddy, basically. And yeah, I think he's becoming a cave instructor himself. Yep. So this is helping him. Uh, he do is that. amazing. And Medi um, has been on awesome. the show, by the way. Uh, he did a reaction with us on a French TV show. I'll also link it right here uh, if you want to check that out. But um, you know, so I talked to Medi, and I'm like, Medi, I need some practice. Can you, you know? Let's do some practice or whatever. So Medi says, absolutely, let's do it. So as soon as I can, just a few weeks after we did this training, maybe a month or I whatever know, it was. You went back right fast. Yeah, I, I'm back in Mariana <laughs> with Medi. With, um, not with me. Right, not with you. Um, I I am back there. And I think I think you were in the keys or something. You 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 had something else to do. But but I don't even think that if you were available, you would have gone just because again. You're, you have made your mind with, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to train. I will exactly. eventually do it. I don't know when, but I'm not ready for this. Like I, I want to be proficient right. on the Sidewinder, on right. the DPV, so that when I go back, they I want them to see a different guy. Right. So I, I, that was not me. I'm like, I wanted to see the same guy. I want to be. <laughs> wanna, okay, all right. I want to be the next. That's week. fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I just repack my stuff. Let's go. So I went back, and I go diving with Medi. Um, first day, just working on mainly my kit. My my, um, you know, I we discover that some of the 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 pitfalls that I had, you know, with my fins pointing a little bit down or whatever is mainly my setup. So we, you know, with Patrick over there at Cave Adventures or whatever, that guy's like an engineer. Uh, so he, he starts tweaking that. my stuff and like drills a hole in my plate and like wow. puts a weight on it. Like yeah. he, he just goes to, at it. Um, and this was on the spirit. We still had to do it on the yeah, spirit. Yeah, because I, yeah, I didn't have enough hours on the Sidewinder. And, um, you know, he, he, whatever, they modify my thing much better, right? So then we go diving with no DPV, me and Medi. Uh, he says, the first day, we're just going to go cave diving. I just want to, you know, make sure your cave diving is perfect. Like trim buoyancy, all that stuff. Kicking, perfect. Okay, cool. So we go cave diving in the morning. And after the morning diving, he's like, we don't have to do afternoon. Like, we're good. Perfect. We should just DPV now. And I'm like, all right, I trust you, whatever you say. Uh, and many is very much like whatever you want to do, we'll do. And I'm like, no, no, whatever you say, we'll do. I'm not, you're the expert. So in the afternoon, he's like, we don't have to cave dive without the DPV anymore. Let's do DPV. Perfect. So the whole afternoon we spend just DPV maneuvering, like turns and stuff like that. And I had a lot of struggles with U-turns, just like going in and U-turns. Like I can do U-turns, but I had a hard time maintaining my same position on the water column, like just staying at the same depth. I would either come out and be shallower or, or deeper or whatever than I was hard time. So I would just do that. Like my, both my, my arms would just hurt from <laughs> turning and turning and turning and turning and turning <laughs> until I got that right. Um, so that was the end of day one. Then day two, then we did toes and whatever, whatever. Um, so we just train and train and train and train and just dive with a DPV. Like that's, that's what we did the most. Um, Again, I was there mostly for training. I had no idea that I was going to get evaluated or anything like that. Uh, little did I know, uh, Ed wasn't even there. Ed wasn't even in Mariana. He was in, I don't know where, 
in Florida or in North Carolina. I think he was in North Carolina. He was in North Carolina when I first got there. Or in there. Virginia, working me, with was, like Navy okay. SEALs or something. For me, I it was know. North Carolina because um, I think he was picking up some giant piece of equipment. He was like training Navy SEALs or something when, when I was there. Okay. So I was like, fine, because I just wanted to train with me. Right. Um, so anyway, Ed shows up and it's like Wednesday or something, like day three. And he starts talking to Maddie and Maddie is like, you know, he's good. He's, he's looking much better. And that's the thing. I mean, you just have to practice. You have to dive. There's no shortcuts. You can't just magically bang. I'm an expert. That's that. It doesn't work like that. So anyway, he talks to him and Ed walks in when we're watching video on Wednesday. I was supposed to be there for four days. Um, Thursday was going to be my last day. And I'm there on Wednesday afternoon watching video with Medi. And everything is looking bad. I'm glad he worked in on Wednesday afternoon, not Monday afternoon. So I'm watching <laughs> Wednesday afternoon video. Everything is looking good. So he's like, so how's it going? You know, what do you get? So he starts watching the video with us. Um, he's like, that looks very good. And I'm like, yeah, you know, Medi's doing a good job, whatever. Um and uh, it's like, how's your toes? Because on Wednesday, we were just, at that point, we had already done toes and whatever. So it's like, How, how's the toes? And I'm like, very good. Maddie's like, very good. He did all his toes or whatever. And he's like, fine, show me tomorrow, 8 a.m. And I'm like, what? I had no idea, right, that I was going to dive with that. So I'm like, okay, well, game on. So Maddie was like, you got this. Don't worry about it. Um, so, yeah, I went back to my... You know, five star accommodations over there at the uh, <laughs> the whatever the cabin the uh, cave adventure has, and um, yeah, next day show up with Ed, um, eight a.m. Jackson Blue, same thing. He said we're gonna go in. You're gonna set up the primary. Um, we're gonna do the bubble check, whatever you know how we do the one point six check, all that stuff. And then we're going to go for a dive at some, uh, we're going to go in on the cavern. You're going to show me U-turns and, you know, all the navigation and stuff. And then we're going to go down the chimney. We're going to go to the second tier, whatever it was at the end. At some point, I'm going to signal you and he was going to be behind me. So I have to pay attention for the, for the light. At some point, I'm going to signal you. My DVB is going to be broken and you're going to tow me out. Okay. So some random point. Okay, great. Um, so we do that, do the U-turns, everything's good. Uh, set the primary, everything's good. Um, navigating inside the cave, do the U-turns, everything, all that stuff is good. At some point I see the light, great stuff. Go tow him, tow is going great. I think I started towing him around 2,000 feet inside the cave. We were pretty deep mm -hmm. inside the cave. Um, very, very small. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big guy and I have a spirit. So it's, I, I was, I was concerned, but I wasn't hitting anything. Um, I've been practicing at that point for days, you know, on that spot. Um, I make it, you know, to the first like breakdown or whatever. There's like a breakdown, mm -hmm. go up and down. And I'm like, don't crash. Don't hit anything. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, like, you know, with Ed, you're like holding your breath. You're so nervous. You oh, don't yeah. want to, you don't want to mess up. This is, yes. you're getting evaluated. Um, and while as soon as I pass the first breakdown and go down, I can't breathe. I just can't breathe anymore. I, I try to breathe. I can't breathe anymore. So I reach with my left hand and I hit my dill button and inflate and I can take maybe like half a breath. Hmm. And I can't breathe anymore. Ugh. And I'm still towing Ed. Like I'm still towing it and I just hit the deal button again. That sounds like water in the counter lungs. Yeah. I hit the deal button again and I get like 25% of a breath. Yeah. That's gotta like, be water in the counter. 25% of a breath. Like I can't breathe. Like I'm completely out of it. So I reach out with my left hand, bail out, put it underneath my neck, regulator in my mouth. I completely bail out. Still towing it. Towing Ed, I see the second breakdown coming. I go over the breakdown. I'm in open circuit at that point. Go over, go under. We go into that it's really long where they do the barrel roll or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Go over that super long thing. And I switch to the left hand and go into bell out. Go into bell out on the on the nerd and the uh, the petrol. And then switch again, go into the bell out. 
into in my uh, my perdicts. So I'm fully bail out at that point to the 32 percent, and I'm just you know out with Ed. So go up the chimney, everything is good. I'm just stowing him. We get to the top of the chimney, and at the top chimney, I feel the squeezes on on my leg. The exercise is out. I unplug from him from the toe, and just wait until he's done. Um, as soon as he's done, he looks at me. He says, okay. I give him the okay sign. And then I point to my mouth. I have a regulator in my mouth. And he's like, he just takes back and he looks at me and he's like, he gives me a thumb up, like up. And I'm like, okay, let's get out. So, um, we go, we do our deco. Thank goodness that my, I had that full rebreather failure. Um, when we were on the way out, you know, I guess we were like, I don't know, like a thousand feet from the exit or whatever. Um, and so I didn't have a whole lot of deco to do. So we did like, I don't know, 12 minutes. I don't know how, how many, how much deco. And then we got out and he was like, what happened? And I'm like, I have no idea. I just, my rebreather stopped working. It just complete failure. Um, and so he was like, okay, I'm going to go pick up your primary. So he went down, he grabbed my primary. I came out when I came out, I noticed that the, uh, exhale loop on, the on the scrubber came out completely i don't know how but i guess i didn't go, do a good job plugging it in or something but it was there from the day before so i have no idea how the day before it worked for two dives uh but anyway it came out completely um and so the loopy was completely disconnected total flood so full flood rebreather completely broken on the way out so um so yeah so uh, ed came out with my primary and I show him the problem. We uh, took it apart. Obviously, full flood. So counter lungs were flooded. My scrubber was flooded. Um, sensors were flooded. He was like, just you know, wash him with fresh water. Like, what are yeah. you gonna do? So I flush him with f fresh water. Um, everything was caustic, but I never reached my mouth because I didn't have air. So I I was forced to bail out. Um, and he said. Well, let's talk about the good things. Um, you know, your primary was you, the way you did your primary was perfect. Um, it was great. Your maneuvering, you know, and stuff, U turns, all of that stuff worked just great. It's like night and day from the last time I saw you. Um, I, you know, he he said some things about the towing and how, like the, I think he said something like the strap. I need to make it longer or something like that. Um, you know, some equipment comments or whatever. Um, and he was like, the fact that you bailed out in the middle of you pulling, you pulling me out of there, like you were towing me out. You had a catastrophic rebreather failure, a real catastrophic rebreather failure, unexpected, not planned, catastrophic rebreather failure deep inside the cave. And you continue to tow me out, didn't tell me anything, didn't stop. I didn't even know you had the failure all the way to the end was really impressive. I had no idea. I'm impressed. So congratulations. You are now a certified DPV cave diver. Wow. So awesome. that was that. Awesome. Yeah. High five, dude. That was awesome. That was awesome. So I was not planning for that. But I'm glad that's the way it worked out. Proud but of you. At the end of the day, I mean, the way I thought about it was if that would have happened in a real dive, like if you really had a problem and your DPV was broken, I'm not going to just stop and be like, sorry, Woody, like I know, you, I know you're trying to swim out, but sorry because I need, to, I need to bail out. And like I know you would have understood and be like, okay, go ahead and bail out and let's get out. Like, you know, I know you would have gotten it, but it's not a big deal. Like we plan for this. That's what we have. Of that's why we have two, you know, tanks that are for bailing out. Yes, we have a catastrophic rebreather failure inside a cave. Big deal. Bail out and get out. Like, what's that's You don't have to stop. So, yeah, that's the way it worked out. So then go back, look at film. You know, he finished the paperwork and stuff. Super happy. Um, end up, you know, having a cigar with it. Talking about some crazy gnarly stories. Um, and then go home super excited about that. Talk to you about what happened. And I feel like, and I don't know if this is true, but I feel like 
when I had that conversation with you, it kind of turbocharged the plans of waiting for a year to get this done. I feel like you were more like, you know what? Maybe I, I, I didn't have a year in my mind. I just had, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I think at that point you were like, eh, maybe I should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course that's motivating. Um, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to have all this in one video. I'll tell my story and you can decide if you want to make Let's this a part two. We'll do it. The Woody journey. So I went back and practiced with the DPV on my sidewinder in a cave. And I was with very experienced cave divers. In fact, cave instructors yep. were with me. I never was in it without that. And um, I just practiced. And what's really weird, and I again, I, I don't know why. I don't know if it was mental or it was the fact that I already had a week where we did all of that on the spirit. When I went back to the sidewinder, you were there on one of them, and I was on the DPV. I felt really comfortable really fast. Yeah. Like almost immediate, like, what happened? You were like looking at me like I wasn't kicking anymore. I was really – it just came together. It's like riding a bike. All of a sudden, you're not riding it, and then your dad's not or mom aren't, aren't holding the seat anymore, and you're riding. And I remember after that – you actually said to me, man, you, you looked really good. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, no. I mean, it's like night and day. So I think getting back on the sidewinder with the DPV, something happened. It just, I, I can't explain it, but it felt very comfortable. So I don't remember. I may have practiced a little bit more. And then I decided to schedule. I emailed Cave Adventures. I'm going to book the, the trailer, the lodge. Maddie's special. <laughs> I'm going to book with Maddie. And I said, you know what? Let me book Maddie. Let me have you for like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And if Ed's available and feels that I'm worthy, I had no expectation. I guess he'll decide if he wants to evaluate me on Thursday or tell me, no, you're not ready. I, I, I really did not know how that Thursday was going to go. I was hoping, but I needed to prove myself. Right. I'm ready to go. And I don't remember when this was, but it was a few months, certainly a few months after that first week. And guess what happens to Woody? I got beyond sick, like flu-like symptoms. Now, what sounds like flu-like <laughs> symptoms in today's world? Now, I'm, I'm triple vaccinated, so I'm really sick. I'm texting Gus. I said, Gus, I am like I'm coughing and hacking. I played a video of it, man. I was Really bad. <laughs> I go across the street to a COVID testing center. They test me. The lady walks up. You're positive. I yeah. mean, I'm like, I freaking got COVID. All right. I'm disappointed, right? Because I was mentally ready to go, whatever. And they're not easy to get their schedule. Then I have to rebook. And I didn't do that right away. And then I went again, maybe another practice session. I don't remember. So, you know, more practice. I rebook for it's actually a couple of months later. And I'm like, I'm going. So I'm driving there on that drive the way you described. Just me and my van, my DPV, my Sidewinder, all my backup gear. And I'm kind of nervous. I'm, it's just me. I'm pulling up. I get to Cave Adventures. I'm getting the check-in stuff. Ed's not there. He was also in North Carolina. Hmm. Um, Medi just messages me. I'll see you tomorrow morning at Monday. So he's not even there, right? The only person that was there was Patrick and Stacy. Stacy's Ed's wife. She's like, yeah, I'm just going to finish up cleaning up the cabin and then you can, you know, come over. Here's the code. Give me a couple hours. So I was like, no problem. I then go, I drive off, I go eat, you know, by myself, something healthy like Burger King. Obviously. I'm by myself. I get to the cabin that night and I'm, I'm really tired. I think I was tired because of stress. I was like nervous, right? Because, and then I, you know, I'm sleeping. I wake up early. I'm going to meet Maddie. It was actually at 9 a.m. Monday morning. I wake up, I meet Maddie at 9 a.m. And he's like, okay, here we go. What I want to do today, Woody, is 
We're going to configure our units. I want to look at your unit because I kept complaining that my right scrubber was floating up. It wasn't parallel to the tanks. It was like this. And I couldn't figure mm. out why. He goes, I want to get that fixed. You told me about it. So he's, and I, and so the first dive, I just want to cave dive. But in that cave diving on the sidewater, you're going to put in the primary and we're going to do jumps and you're going to put in cookies. You're going to put in the jumps and everything. I get in there. And I'm feeling really good. I don't know what it was, but everything was clicking. The primary, easy, you know, proper, good trim and buoyancy, just nailing it. I'm putting in my cookies, like stopping, back kicking perfectly. I'm just bam. And I hear Maddie going, woohoo, like in the back, like he's impressed underwater. Yeah. And he almost, I think he may have high fived me underwater. Maddie, I don't remember. I think a couple <laughs> times. Like, and I was happy and I was like, woo. Like, I'm loving the dive. I'm just enjoying the dive. You know how sometimes when your game is on and whatever your activity is, you're just having a good day? I had a really good day. And we're cave diving in JB. I don't remember how long that dive was. We went to some cool places. And it was awesome, awesome dive. Come out, unwinding everything good or whatever. Everything goes beautiful. I come out, Medi was basically was like, that went really well. Dude, you looked really good. He goes, I think I see what's wrong with your scrubber. Let's go back. I want to fix that. He starts operating surgically on my <laughs> sidewinder, right? Yeah. Like, we're going to lower this. We're going to tighten up that right bungee. We're going to, I feel it's pulling in too much. If I loosen that up, that should drop it down. And oh, the yeah. next dive, we're going in with the DPVs. You're done. You are only DPV diving. We go back in. We go in. And at the beginning there, you're doing like a low PO2 check. And you're only like in four feet of water. And I'm on my side wonder and he gets that adjustment. And I'm just perfect trim and neutral in four feet, just sitting there hovering. And he looks at it. and He's like, yes, underwater is like, and I'm feeling good. And I'm doing like hella turns right in front of him. Back kicking, dude. It was like perfection yeah. in four feet of water <clears throat> at the beginning before the DPV. Then get the DPV nailing everything on the dpv i'm on my game i'm not bragging i'm telling you believe me nobody's harder on myself if i sucked i would tell you gus man dive one was a nightmare <laughs> right he's like right. same thing we're practicing turns we're practicing toes toe one then toe two he throws the dpv at me and i gotta tie it all up i'm neutral i'm in trim the turns i watch him do it i do them I'm not going up. I'm not going down. I'm stopping in the turns. I'm nailing everything. I just didn't have a bad moment with him. Come out. I get, you know, we do all of our stuff. Same thing. We, when we go down to the 20 foot spot, we did our 1.6, you know, we did yeah. our bubble check. Everything, everything, everything is going great. I come up with Medi and he's like, Medi, I mean, you can chime in with comments, but you said to me, Woody, you don't need me for two more days. I, I honestly, you if Ed's back tomorrow, you can test with him. You're, you are, I, there's nothing more. I don't have anything to do with you. I'm like, no, <laughs> Maddie, I'm not confident. Like you're saying, I had a good day. I feel good. The unit feels way better with that scrubber in position, but we are diving for two more days. Absolutely. Two more days. It's like, okay, well then we're going to do some epic cave diving, Woody. And I'll still throw surprise drills at you, but we're going to do some epic cave diving. He goes, are you okay with some pretty tight areas? I'm like, eh, yes. Are there, if, are, are there any other type of areas? If I'm with you, <laughs> absolutely. So we then have the, I have the honor of Medi taking me to some other epic areas in JB still again. Yeah. So the next day on Tuesday was JB again. But one of them was this area called Kings Canyon. I'm like, wow. I've never seen anything beyond the main line and maybe the 
I don't even know if I had ever gone to the second tee. Like, I'm like, wow, this is magnificent. And on that dive, we were DPV and then had to tie off the DPV. And I had to set jump lines to get to this area that you can only swim. Super tight, man. I mean, super tight. I'm on my game again. Like, I'm just doing really well. And drills, more toes. But I come out again, and he's like, awesome. He said, said every day, this is when he told me, he goes, you know, every day, Ed's asking me how you're doing. I said, okay, well, you know, well, great. I mean, that's good. I, I mean, I'm definitely getting better. And we'll, every day, same thing, Gus. We would go back and look at the film, and I... I was very happy with the film. I was. Yeah. I could have used some work with my fin positioning when I was towing. Definitely uh, still needed yeah, some work with that. To improve, it wasn't, of course. you know, but, but, but Maddie said, well, Ed asked me to rank you as follows. Does he suck? <laughs> is he average? Is he good? Is he fantastic? Or is he super fantastic? Five, opportunities for Medi to tell Ed which one of those five I am from suck to super fantastic. Medi said, Ed, look, I'm never going to tell you the word super fantastic for everybody, for anybody. I'm like ready to tell you that, but I'm not going to tell you he's super fantastic. So I'm going to give him a fantastic. And Medi said, Woody, the reason that if I tell Ed super fantastic, you know, it's Ed. I don't know. Maybe you're going to have to do barrel. Okay. First thing I want to see you do, Woody, is a perfect barrel roll, right? I mean, I'm like, no, no, you know, don't. I don't want him to set any. I I said, okay. Right. Wow. I said, that's a huge compliment coming from you. I don't think that's a huge improvement from, uh, if you remember day two of Vortex, he said, well, good news, guys. You're moving from terrible to horrible. And I've seen worse. (laughs) So that's, I want the full full ad scale. Yes. We, we went from terrible to horrible. Yes, yeah, I was now happy. Now we know he starts a, a terrible yeah. and he goes to super fantastic. So no, when I, I got wonder... to, when I got, I remember feeling good. I'm like, <laughs> wow, I'm horrible now. That's pretty good. So anyway, I, I said, I don't feel like I'm fantastic, Medi. That's a really huge honor coming from you because Medi is super fantastic. Yeah, he is. Flawless. There is no other what I would say. Yeah. So he's like, all right, tomorrow, Woody, forget you're not paying me. I want to, I just want to be on the DPV and cave dive with you. I'm comfortable taking you anywhere. This is from Medi. Right. We are going to go to Twin Caves and Hole in the Wall. I've never been to either. So you, we, we get ready the next day. I'm like, I am paying you, number one, because you're, you're guiding me and you're teaching me. So that is a, I just don't believe in that. He's a dive professional. He's helping me. He's right. just so good, Medi. He just didn't want to, like, he maybe thought I'm taking advantage. You're like, no, you're still training me. We get to take one of the boats, which I've never been on. The mill pond is right in back of Ed's house. You take the boat that he has, these rental pond, two boats, two twin caves and a hole in the wall. And it's 10 to 15 minute boat ride. But I'd never been back there. Right. On the boat ride, I'm like, this is magnificent. And Nettie's filming me. I'm like, I've never seen this. He goes, you've never seen this. I'm like, no, I've only been, tra- I said, just, I'm not even in the caves yet. And Medi had briefed me. He had briefed me on both of the dives we're going to do. Well, these dives were spectacular. We get, he goes, we're, we're going to, he, he goes, we're, we're going to get into some really tight stuff. Are you comfortable with that? I said, yes. If you are with me, yes. We go first to Twin Caves. You pull up to this little dock. You kind of get ready on this little dock. And you kind of, there's these tiny little stairs. So it's just an awkward little area to get ready. There's not, and it's like you're going straight down this like barrel roll kind of going into it. Almost uh, like a barrel roll with the DPV. And we go in there and it's, it's beautiful. And Medi's filming everything, man. And we go through some really tight stuff. And there are parts where we get we had to take the DPV off and swim. And there is impossible. At Betty told me you are going first because 
nobody can go through this part and not silt it oh out. Oh my god! Yeah. It, there, it, it's not a matter of are you good or bad, Woody. It's it's just you, you have to squeeze through, and you're going to touch the bottom. And For I sure. and I want you to have good visibility. And I'll film from the behind because it'll be cool for them to see that, you know, the sit, what a real silt that looks like. We go. I have an incredible day with Medi. Gets me back to an area. Does a surprise toast. This time it's surprise. I never know when they're going to come. And I see the light waving. And he said, I, and he put me and he told me later, I'm going to put you in a really hard position to where you're going to have to tell me, which is with the flow. So he's not facing against the flow. I have to approach him where he's still going away from me with the flow. <laughs> and I have to come around him and he's moving. I have to get into my position, hook up, and we're still going this way. And then turn both of us back around against the flow and tow him out. He goes, yeah. I want you to. I want, I want, Make it harder, it's time yeah. to go harder, man. Yeah, you, you yeah, don't, yeah. You, you, I know you can do the other. Nice. And it was harder. And I did it. And it went well. And another, yeah. So I, I was feeling really good. We come out. Great, great, great. Then we're going to go take the boat to Hole in the Wall. Another cave. This cave can be zero visibility from the start based on the time of the year. We're not <laughs> zero, but it can be... Maybe a few Poor feet. Visibility. Yeah. Without, it doesn't matter you, it's the time of the year. We, he goes, I don't know what it's going to be like. He goes, but, um, oh, by the way, on Twin, I had also gone the furthest back in a cave I had ever gone because Medi had staged some gas. So I got to go way, way back, way back. But we, we had gas staged in there. And we were going to get to the staged gas, which was only like 1,800 feet back which I had plenty of gas for. Mm -hmm. And if that stage was good and filled and working, then we would go like to the end of the line, like almost 4,000 feet back. And we did awesome. a long DPV ride, dude. You're DPVing for like 45 minutes. So you really get a lot of practice. All right. That's so awesome. then the next day, the next dive we do hole in the wall. And it is not just bad visibility. Medi said, he goes, dude, I feel so bad. You DPV through there in some of the worst viz I've ever seen Yikes. and nailed it. Now, when I say worse, I mean, I had to okay the line while DPV. You could not see, at, and same with twin. There were times where you could not see your light. You could not see your, your bright cave 4,000 lumen light <laughs> is no longer visible. It's, yeah, it's useless. a blackout. So oh, okay the line and go. You know you're going to come out of that area at some point. Right. So also in twin, my back into hole in the wall. We go all over it. I can tell it's huge. Medi's really trying to uplight it for me, and but the viz was no not good at whatever. But I can tell that is definitely a cave we want to go back to in good viz. It's got gigantic rooms, but in twin he actually underwater underwater said, "All right, do you want to go through a really tight restriction?" Did you want to try to go to a little attention? He's underwater, right? At yeah. The, it's like on the way out where we would have to clip off our DPVs on the main line. And I'm like, yes. He goes, okay. We go into this <laughs> area and it's tiny. I'm like, I don't meant, I'm like a puzzle. Like, how am I going to do this? Yeah. Do I turn this way? Do I turn this way? Medi goes through and has to really wedge himself. I mean, you hear it. like, And, and I'm not, and I know I can get through it, but I've, when I got to it and I didn't go through it, by the way. Yeah. I, and I, here's why I said, well, just in case, if I do go through this and I tear a loop or something, I'm go I'm supposed to evaluate with Ed the next day, Thursday morning, and I don't want to screw up my unit. I don't want to take the risk that it's gonna damage my unit. Right. So I didn't really push too hard. Yeah. So I just shook it off. But I will go back and do that. And yeah. I again, it's just a matter of respect for what I knew I was gonna have to do. All right. This so is... anyway, I come I uh, I come out, we do everything, I come out. Maddie's like, you are totally ready. I said, I'm nervous. You know me, Gus, right? I'm, yeah. I'm nervous. The next day I'm going with, if not the greatest cave diver in the world, can you say he's in the top five in the world? Yeah, for I sure. I mean, there's a bunch of great cave divers, and this is Ed Sorensen. Right. I'm like, okay. You know, 
So Maddie's like, I want you to do this when you're with Ed. I want you to imagine you're just doing, ex- you're cave diving with me. And I don't want you to think that you have to do anything different than what I just saw you do for three days, including day one, before I showed you anything. You were ready when you got here. I almost <laughs> cried when he told me that. I'm like, that's what he told me. That was my final briefing for Medi. You were ready when you got here. That's just awesome. Just think of this as a formality. Which is what I told you. I, when you I went know there. you did, but I'm not, I'm pretty tough on myself. I'm like, I don't know what Ed's going to expect of me, but I knew I was way better. So I get there, 8 a.m., Thursday morning, and Ed is, we're preparing the units, and um, by the way, I want to give a shout out to Chris from Deep Six because he looks at my unit and he gives me brand new stage ones and stage twos. And I also have his Eddie Fins, and it, they are incredible regulators on my bailouts now. I mean, go get deep six stuff, man. It is like sweet. And he said, <laughs> I just want you to dive with it. And he's really cool. But anyway, all right. so Ed's, Ed's like, all right, here we go. We're going we're gonna to take two different cars because I had all my stuff in mine already. So we get to JB, and I said, Ed, I'm nervous. I'll be honest with you. When I'm with you, I'm not going to lie, I'm nervous. I'm just yeah. going to be honest with you straight up. I'm going to do the best I can. And I said to him, I remember what I said. I said, look, I'm going to give you the best that I can be, and I'm going to try my best. And I don't think I can prepare anymore. So I'm prepared to accept whatever happens, happens. Because I don't really think, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. If I can't get through it, I don't know if I can ever get any better than this because I've been really working hard yeah he goes i want you to do this this com- this is coming from ed Sorensen. i just want you to go on a fun dive with me I'm like he goes yeah this is a fun dive that's it yes here's what you're gonna do and he briefs me and yes i want to see you you know go in and we're gonna do real work and you're gonna you're going to tow. It's going to be a tow one and a tow two. You're going to do a lights out, hold the line, hand on the front part of the DPV. I want to see you be able to maintain good buoyancy and trim, but just have fun. I really do. I'm serious. I really want you to try to do that. And I remember when I'm putting on my dry suit, I don't like to zip it myself. And I was nervous to ask Ed to zip it. Like, I, I wonder if he even expects me. Yeah. He's, He's like, yeah, come here. I have this spray stuff that I use on the zipper. And it, by the way, I just bought it. By the way, this stuff just makes your zipper go like, like butter. He's like, sure, yeah, man, no problem. He's like being super nice with me. It's almost like I earned a different level of respect from him or something because I've been working so hard. I don't know. Getting into my unit all by myself, <laughs> zero help. I showed, you know, all of this, everything, hooking up the whole unit all up by myself, never asking him for anything. We get in. And I am nervous at the beginning. We do our 1.6. We do our bubble check or whatever. And by the way, when I first get in, I'm going and I forget to stop and do the 1.6 and bubble check. I'm so nervous. I'm like, I just want to get into it. He waves me and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right away, I remember we do that. And we go in. We go in and I'm I'm doing pretty good. I get one on the video, one of these. We like wanted to see me just at the beginning. But right away, he saw I self-corrected that. Before he even had anything to say, he goes, wow. In one second, I saw that. In the next second, I saw you. Perfect. Nice. He goes, man, Woody. So we do all of the drills. We come out, and I know I'm getting ready for that moment where I'm above water, and I'm going to get briefed by Ed. Right? I'm about to stand up, and it's time for me to hear what Ed has to say. I don't. I know I felt good, but I still don't know – was this good enough for Ed? I, right. So, here's the ending. I stand up. Ed's already standing up. And he looks at me in a pretty serious face. And he says, do you want the good news or the bad news first? And I'm like, you know what, Ed? I need... 
I just need some good news. I, you know what? <laughs> Let me have some good news because I haven't had any good news in this entire journey. So I said, how about just the good news first this time? You know how most people pick the bad news first? I'm like, I just, I just, I'm exhausted. I've, I've right. done, I just, I don't know what else I could do. <laughs> so hopefully there's something good I did. <laughs> and he goes, all right, well, you were spectacular. I, I, I'm, I'm looking up because I, I don't want to misquote Ed Sorensen. I've never heard him say this. He goes, you were spectacular. You're a different guy. I am so proud of you. Give me a hug. I'm standing there with Ed Sorensen. Give me a hug. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I think I was just told that I'm a DPV cave diver. <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, you're definitely a DPV cave diver. There is no bad news. I don't have any bad news. I'm just awesome. And then we got into some other chit-chat about, like, I just did that in front of, like, the Tiger Woods of, of – that's what I told him. I said, you, that's what you are. I got yeah. to play. I said, where else would I get to test? In any other sport in front of, like, the best in the world are going to test me. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show Tiger Woods that I have a good drive. So, Tiger, do I have a good drive? I, you're not going to get to do that. And I got to do that with Ed Sorensen. So yeah. was it meaningful? Do I feel better? I feel – I cannot wait. I am literally in my mind. I, all I want to do is get on my DPV and go cave diving. And I said, Ed, I want to go cave diving on my DPV one time with you. Just go and have fun. He goes, anytime. Absolutely. You are now. I told him we're going to see Brian. He goes, you are totally now ready for that. Now you're ready to be with Gus in the crystal caves of the Bahamas in Abaco. We go back. We watch the film. Ed does a little bit more tweaking on my unit. Mm -hmm. He added this little extender for where my scrubber attached. I mean, they really care about, you know, wanting to help me. This was just being nice to me. Like, you know, to get those scrubbers yeah, perfect. Yeah, are Sidewinder Savannah. No, no, they're, they're Sidewinder Masters. So he had this little extender, yeah. which I haven't dove yet. And then one more thing, Ed's like, hey, you know, I have this strap that I invented that's like a harness that I used. He goes, you try it. If you don't like it, return it to me. They totally reconfigure my unit again. Re Every strap <laughs> is coming out. I'm like, oh, no. And they <laughs> size it on me. I'm putting it on. Take it back off. It's not... Put it on. Take it back off. Redo this. Medi's like having to do all this. And I haven't dove it yet with that strap, but it feels so secure, man. It like rides up on your hips. I mean, it's like holding you. It's awesome. Nice. And that's when Ed also told me, hey, I'll tell you, the only comment I would really have during the film is that if you, when you DPV cave dive, if you spread your legs out rather than keep them together, you'll feel way more stable. It's like standing. If you put, you could push somebody over when their legs are together, but you can't really push them over when your legs are apart. Right. Try that next time. Congratulations again. End of story. So that's the update. And then for everybody. that's the update. And then there's the surprise that you did for me. I don't know if you, if, that may be another video. No, I, I think we should talk about it. So, yeah. So, like Woody said, when, you know, after I got certified, I, you know, Woody was, was kind of like, yeah, I, 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 I want to start practicing some more and I want to go back and, you know, and get certified as well. And I started seeing, obviously, the improvement because of the sidewinder and because of the fact that he was practicing more as well. And I contacted this guy in Poland who creates these like action figures, these figurines of divers, custom made. He's an artist and he makes these amazing figurines. Um, the website is Models for Divers. And um, I made one of Woody. I had one made um, to give it to him as a gift when he got certified. So I, I've been holding on to it. Finally, I was able to give it to him. And uh, there's actually a video of his reaction. And uh, here it is. See what you got? Okay. I... Whoa. Okay. 
That's really, really cool. <laughs> um, when in, my reaction is, when in the world could you have possibly done this? Dude, I, I just finished this. I had no, I mean, what if I, I didn't know what was gonna happen. And you know what else my reaction is looking at this? Do you know how badly right now I wanna be side by side next to you? There's me holding mine and you're right there next to me and we're just cruising along on our DPVs going, we did it. We frigging did it. I love it, dude. And I love you. Thank you so much for that. I guess you had some serious confidence that I was going to pull it off because <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is not just made. And um, that means a lot to me. And I, one other thing I wanted to say is honestly, your encouragement and your persistence in this journey that we shared together, I don't know if I would have gotten through it without that. I really needed that um, motivation, I would say. So thank you for that and this. Thank you. First of all, it was so meaningful. Not just that this figurine, the Gus and this guy, every detail. I mean, literally, like the coloring, where my, where everything is on my unit. It is it, every single detail was thought about. I can tell. Yeah. Not just that, but it was the fact that that meant a lot because that means that Gus really had confidence in me and he really was pushing me and he really believed in me. And even when I was there, he was texting me like, you got this. Absolutely. Making sure I was staying confident. Like, you got this. Give me the update today. And he really cared a lot. Yep. And I needed that. And I think I feel now, honestly, I've, I'm so proud of both of us because, man, we have – you know, a DPB cave certification from Ed Sorensen, and it did not come easy. No. And I think what Gus said at the beginning is absolutely profound words. It makes it sweeter. I, the, I think the fact that we had to struggle, and we did struggle, is that much better. And I was later told that a lot of people have to go through multiple times when they take this class with Ed, but... Nevertheless, I feel like I really believe in us as good DPV cave divers. He makes you also uh, appreciate and respect the people that get certified with that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, not just in DPV cave, but in other areas mm -hmm. as well. Cave divers, site mount divers, like whoever. Um, they really, you know, take it seriously. They're just... I, I got to say this without being insulting because I, I don't know a lot of other... DPV cave dive instructors, and I'm sure they're all good. You know, Marissa's standards are extremely high as well. That's the only other one I've done this with. But, I, you know, cave adventures, man, it is such incredible training. You are not going to get out of there without improving dramatically, without every single part of your diving improving. From yeah. the way they configure your rig to the way you dive, to the way you think about diving, to the whys and the logic behind everything. You are going to be better in every single aspect of your diving. And it's almost like I said this to Mehdi, and I'll end with these words. When I started training with Cave Adventures, I remember thinking, which was back when I did my Sidewinder training, it was like after 40-something years, now I'm learning how to dive. I'm starting all. <laughs> they're like, oh, really? You know how to dive? It was like starting over, starting from the beginning. And it was it totally and completely changed who I am as a diver. And I'm just so happy about it, really. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, yep, uh, this episode comes to an end. Thank you so much to, again, everyone who was involved and everyone who has been asking for an update in our training. We are now DPV Cave certified. Very proud of that. And um, hopefully, uh, and yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people helped us. Brian Boucher, Doug Ebersol, Marissa yep. Eckert. Absolutely. A lot Maddie, of people involved. Maddie. Ed, yep. you know, they were all helping us with all of this. Yep, absolutely. 
Um, and if you watch this all the way to the end and you enjoy hearing our stories and things we get to do, we're not like a lot of people are commenting out there. We never get out of this office and we don't dive <laughs> and we don't train and we don't oh, do yeah. anything. Uh, we actually like to go out and dive and do all the things and actually prove it to you. Click on this next video right here and uh, check out some more of our interesting stories and training and dives. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.